Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the locative. So, uh, the locative in Polish means that something is happening in place or on that place and it can also mean uh, about this place or about this subject. For example, let's let's just go uh, directly to, to the words, to the prepositions that are used for this uh, to indicate the locative. In the Polish. So you have przy, which means near or by, na, at or on, po means after, o means about or off, the means in. So we're gonna learn how to use these words and how the following words are gonna be changing when they come after these, these prepositions. So we're gonna go step by step to learn this so that you can understand clearly how this this works and you can memorize some examples that kind of repeat all the times. So how are they used and what happens to words coming after them? The pronouns and the adjectives that come after these prepositions are changed. You might seem familiar with this, however, I'm gonna repeat the same. I'm, I'm going to repeat them again. So, by simply adding YM, which is M, and IM to the masculine form, including neutral form, of course, because I'm always talking about masculine and neutral at the same time, uh, we can change the pronouns or the adjectives that are coming after the words PSZ, NA, PO, O, Z, which uh, indicates uh, a locative aspect in Polish. So let's look at some of these examples uh, when we're talking about uh, male or, or, or masculine uh, pronouns. So na tamtym, on that, na tamtym comes from the word tamten. So when you say on something, you, you just remove n and you put m at the, at the beginning. Same, same uh, goes with Tim, with Tim, in this, or Novem, about a new. So Nove becomes Novem, or Nove becomes Novem, when you say a locative uh, word before it. Okay, so in the feminine form, uh, we add A, as usual, as in other uh, directive uh, prepositions, we use the same uh, form here. Okay, so na tamte, so tamta becomes tamte, because there's this, these prepositions that change these forms to this form. Okay, vte, ta becomes te, means in this. Onove, about a new. So when you say uh, how to differentiate between uh, something new that is fem uh, feminine or masculine, you just change the, the the ending of the word. Okay. By adding ich to the plural form, for example, na tamtych. So tamtych means on those. We just add ich at the at the ending. Like here we add in, like here we add a, but like in the plural form we always add ich when we're talking about pronouns and adjectives. Vtych on these, in these, sorry. Onovech about new stuff, about new something. We're gonna see more examples later. So now we're gonna talk about the actual nouns or places that are changed in another way. Uh, that comes after these pronouns, if these pronouns are used in the sentence. So for masculine and neutral forms, we add ie, e, u at the ending of at the at the ending. Sorry. For example, sklep becomes sklepie, chleb becomes chlebie, teatr. This is teatr. 
a big, uh, we just add Z and E, which is E generally, like the aim is to add the E, but since it's, it's kind of weird to say teatre, so we just like say teatre. So let's just memorize when you have like the R and you want to put it in, uh, in the locative aspect, you just like uh, put the Z and add an E at the ending. So the, it does sounds like a location, okay? This is how Polish works. Uh, dach, dachu. Just add U in this. Kraj, kraju. Spital, spitalu. Dom, dom. So like there's only a few, few, um, uh, like different rules that, that follows in this situation. For example, when you have P or B, you have to add IE at the example, so, uh, at the end. So like yeah or yeah here. And like by time when you read and see more words, you're gonna memorize them and you're gonna make a diagram in your mind that can help you without even thinking, say the correct words. For feminine form, we add ye, e, e, and e. And remember, we're still talking here about nouns that come after uh, the pronouns, okay? So, at the ending, we put ye, if it ends with the a, because we know the feminine words end with a usually. So we change it into mama, into ye, into mamie. So siostra, the same, the same as before, siostra becomes siostrze, okay? Because we need to add the e, but like, it's weird to say siostrze in Polish, so we say we say siostrze, 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 sorry. It's kind of still complicated for me to pronounce this stuff. Okay. Gazeta becomes gazetche. So here I need to focus because here we want to add ye because you have the ending ta. Oh, sorry, just messed up things. So this is the normal word here, gazeta, but we want to change it to locative. So we remove the ta, we add a ch. I and E. And this is always like this, like in, in other words that end with TA, they're gonna end the same way, so you don't have to worry about this. Just think about it, because if, you, if you're gonna add like this, if you're gonna put T, E, E, yeah, and, and E, it's gonna be like weird to say gazetje, so it's better to say gazetje. It's the same in English when you say something, for example, examination, Like, like you pronounce it shun and not tien, so, so the same way in Polish they have found a way just to make the word sound better. Książce, książka, here is another rule. Książka, so you have the key, uh, the ka, and you need to a, uh, add in this situation a, but you cannot say książka. However, in some books you might find it, like in Old Polish or something like this, or in other contexts, in other rules. But like, when you, when you want to do a locative form for the word książka, you're going to have to remove the k and replace it with t. And it works with all the other words that end with k. So, książce. We're going to see more examples soon. Twarz means face. Means face. This is a feminine form, even though it doesn't end with a. But like there's all, there's there's always other words that can that doesn't need to end with a to be feminine. For example, twarz, krew, this one, and we're gonna see more examples. As well as we said before in other videos, moc is a feminine word and pomoc as well. Podróż is a feminine word, yeah. We're gonna talk about these in other videos and more later. Okay, krev is gonna become krivi. So the word krev means blood, becomes krvi when it's when it is locative. I know it might sound panicking and a lot of information, but trust me, 
I have made them in the way that look way less complicated than in the books or in like in the normal grammar books you're gonna look at if you want to study Polish. So it's better to see it in small, uh, small rules, colored, uh, than seeing them in the real big books of grammars. Uh, okay, so let's continue. For plural form, we add ach. At the ending, for example, gazeta, it's so simple, becomes gazeta. So just like remove the A and add another ach, just so you don't mess up your mind. Dom, domach. Kses, kseseł, bo to jest, uh, because it is kseseł, it is a kseseł, usually. It is, yeah. So, kseseł in plural. Książka, książkach. Siostra, siostrach. So it's easy, as you see. So now let's see them with some examples. The masculine and neutral form. Wczoraj byłem w sklepie. Yesterday I was in the shop. W sklep, sklepie. As we've seen in the, in the rules. Jestem z moim... Oh no, I don't need to, 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 to do this. Jestem z moim bratem. This is the, the one, the, uh, the Z that means with. Uh, it's like the possessive with the Z. I've talked about it in other videos. If you want to go to see other videos, you have explained this. Okay, so we were talking about location. W szpitalu. Szpital becomes szpitalu. Rozmawialiśmy o moim bracie. So, mój brat. This is a pronoun. A possessive pronoun becomes moim. I'm gonna do another video about all the possessive pronouns so you don't have to worry about this but like in this case just no it becomes moim. And I guess it's simple because all you have to do is add im like in the rules. Brat becomes we remove add say because we cannot say bratie because it's weird. It's gonna uh, uh, add ce IA to become bracia. So, there will be a party on this roof. To będzie impreza, or it's better to say, będzie. Impreza na tym dachu. This, tym, like the rules. Dach, dachu. Like some of you are familiar with these uh, things here that I'm talking about, like the pronouns, because in other uh, in other rules they follow the same uh, pattern. What is it about? So when one uh, ask usually something, someone, what's this is about? You can say just na czym to polega. So czym here is the same as a pronoun because you're asking. It's, 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 instead of uh, so, so comes chim. I hope you know uh, what so means. So means what? So what is it about? This kind of the form that is usually used. You can memorize this form. And I'm gonna do, of course, uh, videos that can cover all these interrogation forms and how to to change this. So chim, chego, so. Don't worry about it right now. Here, Kim comes from word Kto. Kto means who. So, who. Who is she thinking about? O Kim. We need to add the I am here according to the rules of the locative. So, we're gonna use the word Kim. Ona Mishli. Ten, uh, the pen is on the table. Du copies. Leže na biurku. So it's simple. Leže means lie or like is on the something. Um, biurko becomes biurku. Simple. Siedzę przy stole i jem. I'm sitting at the table and I'm eating. So stu becomes stole. 
Let's just memorize it because here you're gonna, uh, the rule is to add um, e, but like when you have stu, you're gonna have to say stole because if you say stole, it's gonna be it's gonna mean something else and it's gonna be different. It's not gonna be right in Polish. So, so just memorize it. When you use locative, you use this form. The feminine form. They are mentioning me in the newspaper. Vespominają o mnie w gazecie. Do not, like omnie, this is how, like o here means about, mnie, it is like already uh, the correct form. Mnie means me. So I'm not just talking about this right now. Let's just talk about w, ga uh, w gazecie because it comes from the word gazeta, as we said before. So gazeta becomes gazeta. I hope it's clear by now. I'm going to the cinema after work. Ide do kina po pracy. So praca, which means work, becomes pracy. As I said in the rules uh, before. So always you can go and recheck the rules when you forget something. And with time, of course, you're gonna uh, re uh, remember them. And if you say pracę, if you just like, if you say it orally, no one's gonna notice if you said pracę or pracę, so. And if you write it, it's not gonna be a big deal if you're still learning Polish. It all comes with time. Uh, we are talking about our friend. Rozmawiamy o koleżance. So here, as I said before, koleżanka becomes koleżance. Because we're not saying koleżanke in this form, it means something else. We're gonna have to make it look like a locative word. We're gonna have to re remove the ka, put the te. That's a rule. It follows all the, the words. We are sitting on a wooden bench. Siedzimy na drewnianej ławce. Let's forget about this word now. Let's just like consider that we have this. Siedzimy na ławce. So we are sitting on a bench. Ławce becomes from the word ławka. Ławka, as we said before, is going to become ławce. So it's clear. So let's go back to the how it was before. So here we're adding an adjective. An adjective, as we said, we use it in the feminine form to add. Uh, we use the a in the feminine form to make it look uh, locative when it comes after na, for example, which is a locative preposition, to give it a kind of adjective look or 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 a locative lo, locative form. Anyway, siedzimy na drewnianej na drewnianej ławce. Drewnianej comes from the it's wooden. Drewniane. But remove the e, we put a to become because it's a uh, feminine form. However, if, uh, let's say it was masculine, we just like add drewnianem. Okay. I cannot actually. I don't know why I'm saying okay. I don't know that you cannot reply okay or I don't know whatever. In this book, there are many mistakes. W tej książce książka becomes książce jest wiele błędów. I am thinking about my sister. Myślę o mojej. Moja becomes mojej. Siostrze. Siostra becomes siostrze. As we said before. We are now in manufactura. There's another example for ra, the ending of RNA. Manufactura is a place in Poland, is a beautiful place that has been remounted 10 years ago. So, jesteśmy teraz w manufakturze. So, that's the form, the same as here. There's a lot of iron in blood. W krwi jest dużo żelaza. Żelaza means iron. Okay, so krew simply becomes krwi. 
because we, we need to add E at the, at the ending. I usually eat in the kitchen. Zvikla, usually. Yem v kuchni. Myšle o mojej mamie. I am thinking about my mother. So, mojej, moja mojej, mama, mamie, m, mie. Memorize it. It follows other forms as well. So, let's go to the plural form. They are mentioning you in many newspapers. Vespominajom o tobie. We're going to talk about this in other videos. Don't worry about it. V vielu gazetach. Actually, what we are talking about today is like the hardest thing. For me, it is the hardest thing in Polish. So, if you just understand this, or if you didn't just like watch it again and again till you understand, it's going to be like the... <coughs> Like the essence of this language. So, uh, uh, they are mentioning you in the newspapers, the gazetach. Let's just forget about the word vielu, which comes from the word vielu, which means many. So, gazetta becomes gazetach because it is in plural. Now we're, we're going to add an adjective, vielu, viele. It's a, it's a neutral, so we said neutrals become, we remove the E at the end, for example, if it is ending with E, and we put U. Simple as that. Na stołach są chusteczki. There is, the tissues are on the table. Na stołach. So, stu becomes stołach. Okay? Just memorize it. W szkołach, szkoła, becomes szkołach. Nauczyciele uczą uczniów. In the school teachers teach students. Ok. Uh, there are fish in this river. Są ryby w tych rzekach. I don't think I need to explain more. I mean, it's obvious. Here, like these are like the last two examples. They are like kind of more complex of, uh, from other sentences. I would like you to focus here a little bit and then we finish. In these beautiful parks, there are lakes. Okay? So, te, which is the plural, or T, uh, becomes tych. Because it's in plural, it's, it's known. Piękny becomes pięknych, normal. Park, parkach. So I don't think it is really uh, complicated here. You're just going to have to know where to add. This uh, ich or ach. Ich is for pronouns and adjectives, and this is for the actual word or the, the noun or the, ver or the place. W tych szalonych dniach musimy siedzieć w kwarantannie. So, let's also focus here. Here depends on how much you know in Polish and how are you actually uh, good with vocabs. Uh, in these mad days, we have to sit in quarantine. So, w tych, in these, szalonych, mad, this is an adjective, ich, dniach. Dniach becomes from the word dzień in singular. Dni in plural becomes dniach. Musimy siedzieć w kwarantannie. Kwarantanna becomes kwarantannie. Okay? I don't think it's it's really complicated since we covered all the rules. So I hope you guys understood something. And if you didn't, just go by it again. And if you didn't, you still didn't understand. You can just like write what what you didn't understand in the comments, so I can maybe do another videos explaining uh, some stuff or more stuff. And if you like this video and if you find it uh, found it helpful, please subscribe and click the 
bell icon so you can receive a notification whenever I post a new video. Thank you.